cars with sensing probes that follow the road with no help from the driver. And the car is automatically operated and guided to preset destination. Progress can be accurately checked on a synchronized scanning map. With no driving responsibility, the family relaxes together. Vehicles electronically paced, travel routes remarkably safe, swift and efficient. In my last video, I spoke about how in the not so distant future, gas powered cars are going to be worthless, that EVs will hold their value due to unprecedented demand of the autonomous fleets, operators like robo taxis, etc., and that we're currently at a tipping point. If you haven't seen it, maybe now's a good time. Watch the episode and then come back. Now, this episode is kind of part two. We're going to be focusing on the profound impact of autonomous fleets will have on society and why in four to six years time owning a car will be entirely or totally unnecessary and how transport will be close to free within the well, metropolitan area at least. It's the intersection between free mobility and what will be decentralized delivery for goods and services that makes this happen. I'm going to explain why the symbiotic relationship is such a game changer, why few people are talking about it, and it seems many more simply fail to understand. Let's get into it. Autonomous vehicles will be a seismic shift for mobility. The built environment, our cityscape, and the logistics industry, which will in turn have a domino effect that will change retail and commerce and eventually touch every aspect of our lives. As adoption of AVs accelerates, it will create a virtuous circle of diminishing costs and increasing quality of service and convenience, which will in turn further fuel adoption, a network effect. On the flip side, individual ownership, especially gas powered ones, will enter a vicious circle of increasing costs and diminishing quality of service and convenience, contributing to a massive decline in demand. Owning a car will simply not make sense on, on this level alone. To better understand how this transition plays out, we must first understand the difference in cost from conventional transport, as we know it, to electric autonomy. Firstly, car buyers of any kind considering a purchase will be faced with new economics. The choice of switching to AV fleets over individual ownership. From the offset, AV fleets will be eight to 10 times cheaper than that of owning an ICE car and five times cheaper than that of an EV. Conservatively, factor in financing, insurance costs, maintenance, taxes, parking fees, depreciation, and okay, in my case, citations, speeding fines, and quite a bit of them. Currently, the average cost per mile in the US is 60 to 80 cents for an ICE car, 35 to 45 cents for an EV, much higher in Europe. Uber costs two and a half dollars per mile, buses $1.3. To put things in perspective, the projected cost per mile for AV fleets is 10 to 15 cents, and it will only get lower as competition heats up and business models mature. Note, AV fleets will be running 24 seven with very little maintenance costs over the lifetime of 500,000 miles or more. Also fleet vehicles will easily change from passenger to delivery workhorses working all hours of the night, nonstop. Some of you may be wondering, okay, how fleet vehicles will charge and how much how much time out of the day will that take? Well, based on all my research, about four to 12 minutes per day at most. AV fleets will be a battery swapping standard with swapping depots strategically placed all over the city or metropolitan area. Simple algorithms will calculate the ultimate time to come in and swap out, keeping the fleet running better than JFK Airport. Neo cars from China take under four minutes to swap the battery today the system is perfect for autonomous fleets. The whole process is fully automated, not a human in sight. The scale and cost of savings in relation to disposable income is vast. 
The option of spending just 2k a year on AV fleet journeys or, or less on AV pooling journeys, as opposed to 10 to 12,000 a year on personally owned cars, produces a very significant increase in disposable income for the average family unit. That's almost 12 to 14% wage increase. This will inject some $1 trillion into American pockets by 2030, potentially generating the largest infusion of consumer spending in history. And that's before AV fleets mature into, a, say, a monthly subscription of, say, 50 bucks or less. Bear with me, we're building up to that. The cost savings and increased productivity, coupled with the free flow of goods and services, will have a downstream impact on all businesses and consumers alike Transportation and delivery costs for businesses is the highest cost center, especially that last mile. 35% of all costs, in fact. With those costs bordering insignificant to the bottom line, will empower the smaller players, breathe life back into the high street, and a move away from the dominating expensive online distributors like Amazon. Distribution will be localized. Shops will become showrooms with the vast majority of the space for storage and packaging. Edge retail, if you will. Cheap delivery enables the product offering to change. New entrants can now enter the market that was once prohibited for lack of logistics and infrastructure. Case in point, in the US, most vendors on Uber Eats are restaurants, but in China, most vendors on Meituan platform, Chinese equivalent, are home cooks, and all because of cheap delivery. Now think about that for a second. It certainly gives a new meaning to ghost kitchen. I personally love the idea of tailoring my weekly diet from home cooks that are seriously good at a particular diet. It's not so much deciding which restaurant to order from Uber Eats, but to follow your dietary regime cooked by a handful of your favorite local cooks and influencers. It would open up a whole new way of living. What the internet did for the free flow of information, the autonomous economy will do for the free flow of goods and services. The downstream effect of massive cost reduction in transport and delivery costs for independent brands, brand owners, and retailers will support a move back to the quasi real estate economy but in mobile form, autonomous pop-ups, pop-up, pop-up, pe pe autonomous pop-ups, uh, <laughs> say that again, autonomous pop-up, autonomous pop-up shops could even move between city and shopping centers, offering a new retail experience without a base. Providers of goods and services can use EVs to take their products to their consumers almost anywhere, anytime. Mobile showrooms sitting next to autonomous coffee shops. It's a transition from people looking for goods and services, the services looking for the people, the right people at the right time, in the right places. Now that we have an idea as to the scale in cost benefits and the insane impact autonomy will have on transport and delivery, we can now begin to understand how and why AV fleets will be at the very most a small subscription. Fleet revenues will come from advertising alone. Advertising will be in a form of augmented reality, keeping passengers immersed with offers and deals, restaurant dailies, services, all on the fly in a more pleasant disposition. It's not just some random ad social media throws at you based on a comment you wrote on a particular product, so-called targeted advertising, but it's more of an enriching advertising campaign, if you will one in which informs you of products and services around you. As you move, you're closer to it. It's relevant. AI won't tell me where, what shows are on or, or you can eat Sunday brunch or flash sales. It pesters us and essentially reminds us of our interactions online by suggesting similar things. Consumers will effectively stream over the network AV fleets are creating, the outside world around us. This will make it possible for consumers to access things they didn't even know existed or liked. Businesses can leverage and take advantage of this unique opportunity to deliver a personalized consumer experience based on exact location and preferences. Target advertising in real time. Hell, it could even be your culinary tour guide on a, a city you've just landed in if you buy the app. So as I mentioned before, this is the intersection between autonomous travel and autonomous transport. 
The cost and access impact on retail and commerce will translate back to the consumer, whilst the impact of the cost and travel will translate back to retail and commerce. AV fleets will do more for our living standards than the invention of the car itself. Healthcare will be mobilized, clinics on demand, lunch break massages or dental hygiene. Now, beyond the absolute access to efficient and free travel, AVs will also contribute to a complete redesign and thinking of street systems and cityscape. Congestion will pitter away as adoption rises. At first, simply by replacing bus lanes to dedicated AV lanes, then gradually changing to the heaviest congested areas, such as retail districts, business hubs, etc., to AV only. Public AV fleets will be constantly on the move, and even private AVs will be sent back home after dropping you off at, at work, or at the very least get sent back to a cheap outer city parking zone. Parking dead zones within the city will be turned into parks and playgrounds. City planners can reimagine flexible streets that open or close and change direction over the day in unison with commute times, school hours, weekends. Conventional streets are static and designed only to handle congestion. Smart design will harness an unprecedented opportunity to revitalize the built environment and ultimately improve people's way of life and health. We have a lot to look forward to. Our journey has just begun, but one thing's clear, autonomous transport will change and impact our lives for the better, forever. AV fleets will be vastly cheaper and vastly more convenient than any form of public transportation. This will not only blur the lines between public and private, but it will also lead to a virtual merger between them. My mouth is getting dry, I'm talking too much. Cost to the user will quickly lower as the market matures through new revenue sources such as advertising and an app ecosystem. Any remaining costs to the consumer might be covered by corporations or local governments. Corporations might sponsor vehicles or offer free transport to market goods or services to commuters commuting using Starbucks coffee on wheels. The impact of a dramatic reduction in delivery costs massively affects the market dynamics and will drastically change how goods and services are delivered to consumers. AVs will heighten the customer experience from luxury to niche. Brands can take absolute control of how their product or service will be delivered and create a more personalized experience. Not another Amazon Prime box filled with an assortment of unrelated stuff. This will afford the opportunity to further market themselves, a throwback to the door-to-door -door sales. So if you've got a sec, jump into my Patreon channel. There you'll find a deeper dive on all my episodes which companies are leading the race, all my research, links. It's informative, a little bit more technical, but very informative. Link in the description below. Too noisy. Anyway, as ever, thanks very much for watching and stay tuned for more insights. Peace.